August 1946, Athens, Tennessee. True story. It was a boiling over because it was election day. The trouble with that was there was a whole hive of corruption around the election and around those in power at the time. I'm not going to refer to the men in charge of the hive of corruption and all the deputies and all that because they don't deserve to be remembered by posterity other than being scum of the earth and maggots. The kind of stuff that you'd make sure you got all of it off your shoes before you dared walk in your house. They don't deserve to be remembered. A fellow that does deserve to be remembered is a guy named Bill White. And Bill was a veteran and the veterans play a they are the central role, really, of this story. 1946 was just the boiling point, the breaking point. The problems were made aware long before that. There were allegations of uh, electoral fraud in 1940, 1942, and 1944, and nobody did anything. And the thing of this was, Mind you, this is World War II, and basically any eligible man that was in reasonably good health and of fighting age was sent overseas to various locations to fight World War II. And in their absence, this hive of political corruption seized the town of Athens, Tennessee, and they owned everything. They owned the school system. They owned the news media, basically newspapers and radio at the time, primarily newspapers. Uh, and they owned the police force. And a lot of these deputies were ex-convicts. They weren't allowed to be in the military. And to compound matters, they weren't paid a salary, these deputies. So it was based on a percentage of the tickets issued and arrests made. And, and it quickly became this just hive of corruption where they would stop tour buses going through town and the so-called deputies would go through the buses and get the tourists and in charges of public drunkenness and intoxication, regardless of the level or if they had even been drinking at all. And these deputies were paid based off that. So you can imagine how this went. And very quickly, all this power went straight to their head and they started roughing people up. We run things around here. This is our town. It's our system. And Bill White later said, you couldn't even get a job as a janitor at the school system without their approval. They owned everything. Well, these GIs came back from World War II. These have been trained men, trained to fight and trained to kill when necessary. And, and they had some problems. They'd seen some terrible things and done some terrible things. And pretty much all they wanted is to live their lives. And as Bill White said, we wanted to drink our beer and be left alone. And these deputies would seize on them coming out of the bars. They're already inebriated. So they'd rough them up and beat them up. Also, these men had, um, I forget the actual term, but it was basically discharge pay. So they had a goodly amount of uh, sum of cash on them and those deputies wanted that money. So they'd roughen them up and then pretty soon you're resisting arrest and then we're going to get you on that. And there's more fines, more money to be made. I mean, this is bad juju all the way around. This Bill Wyatt, before the election in August of 1946, he started kind of mobilizing kind of getting some guys together. And he, in it, not necessarily him totally, but in essence, this movement formed in the town. We want to take our town back. This ain't right. The corruption has gone way too far now. And they instituted and gathered up political opponents all the way, you know, from the mayor to the treasurer to the chief of police to have an opposition party and their slogan was your votes will be counted as cast. There ain't gonna be no funny business now. And they had poll watchers. Meanwhile, Bill White is stocking up. He had about 30 pistols and he had about 30 men 
that were former GIs that he had mobilized and gotten ready. And they had poll watchers. This, this, this is coming to an end now. It's going to stop. The trouble with that is the hive of corruption that was in power, they don't easily like to give up control of their little empire. So we get to August of 1946, and an election is to be held. Well, of course, the corrupt people are in charge of the election. We'll be counting the votes. You know, don't even worry about that. Oh, yeah, it's going to be honest. You can count on us. Elderly black man named Tom Gillespie went to vote. They just simply wouldn't let him because he was black. And when he protested this, they hit him with a pair of brass knuckles. Pertner, you know, knocked him out. He got up and ran away in fear. I just shot him in the back. Another guy saw that a ballot box was empty, even though people had been voting on it. And he protested that. And he was arrested. Charges him of uh, election interference. I mean, this is, it, they ain't letting go of that power. Well, it's estimated between 30 and 60 of these former GIs, it's time to shine, boys. And so they did. Some of the GIs got hold of about seven deputy sheriffs, rounded them up, took them 10 miles out of town, stripped them naked, tied them to a tree and whipped them. We, we ain't pissing around, kids. It's over, it's done. But again, that hive of corruption will not let go of power. Day went on, there was outbreaks of violence all over the town. And finally, this corrupt entity, namely led by the police force, took the ballot boxes and ran to the local jail and barricade locked themselves in. We're gonna count the ballots, you know, we gotta we gotta get to get we gotta find out who won. And GIs weren't having it. And estimates really vary on how many were actually involved and uh, exactly the timing of what happened, what they knew was and what Bill White knew was. He was kind of the leader of this show for the GIs. And what he knew was this had to happen before sunrise because they were making phone calls from inside that jail begging for National Guard and, and outside departments to come in and suppress this little insurrection. We, ooh, ooh, we can't have this disorder, never mind all the years of corruption. So it's kind of estimated that between a couple hundred, clear up to estimates of 2,000 people got involved on the side of the GIs. They followed them down to the jailhouse, put the lights on them. And Bill, you know, these are, these are your local politicians. They don't know nothing about nothing. You got ex-convicts that are deputy sheriffs. They don't know about military uh, procedures and fighting strategies. And Bill White said, that's great. I'm glad that they went in there and locked themselves in the jail. They went across the street to a bank with a higher position in field fire. And man, they opened up. A barrage of bullets hit that jail. And at some point, they got the keys to the local National Guard armory and started handing out rifles and ammunition. There was a couple Thompson submachine guns that were doled out. Pistols for every, and I mean, they barraged that jail. A couple of the sheriffs got shot. Oddly, nobody on either side of this whole fray was killed. But man, they unloaded on that jail. It, you're going to come out. We're going to count the ballots. We're going to see honestly who won this election. It's over. Somewhere they came up with sticks of dynamite. They started taping them together and lighting them off. And they're blowing up cop cars. It's, it's over. Molotov cocktails. I mean, you name it. About 3.30 a.m., the police finally surrendered. The existing hive of corruption. And all of a sudden, the local police, you know, a lot of the, the thugs that had been kind of running things, they were nowhere to be found. They left town because they'd been killed, they thought. It was done, it was over. The GI movement had won. The results of the election had been counted lawfully and accurately. And the GI candidates uh, won by easily a two to one margin. It was done, it was over. A couple of interesting things that the GI program, I'm gonna refer to it as obviously, what they instituted was that there was going to be a salary cap 
court officials as badly needed today. The gambling houses in the in the city, which were run by the thugs, of course, and were a huge trafficking of illicit money and, and illicit activities. They were raided and their operations were demolished. This was done, a done deal. The former mayor and four aldermen resigned. All the former deputies were, they either resigned or were replaced. It was completely finished. It was over and the GIs won and saved the day and saved the town in essence. The trouble with that, you got a bunch of GIs now fired up doing some drinking, trained men and trained for violence. And they didn't just shut her down when they had won the election. They're drinking, they're carrying on, they're shooting, firing shots into houses of people they didn't like. And Bill White personally went around and beat the crap out of them because apparently Bill White was a badass. And he said, if you hit him with billy clubs or blackjacks or whatever, they didn't respect you, they didn't, but if you hit them with your fists, you earn their respect. And he said, by the end of that weekend, my hands were so so I couldn't put them in my pockets. Bill White is a badass, ain't no two ways about it. Trouble with that? They had no staying power, like most things in America. It worked for a while. It was on the up and up for a while. Within a few years, things kind of resorted back, reverted back to normal. And normal was corruption. They just did it quietly. It wasn't so vulgar and so flagrant. And Athens, Georgia, or I'm sorry, Athens, Tennessee, is just like any other town in America where there's certain amounts of corruption, either minor or major. It's just like everywhere else because we, we're not vigilant. We don't keep an eye on things. We don't have time, a lot of it. You're trying to live your life, you're trying to earn a living, you're going to work, you know, you ain't got time to fiddle around or the energy or interest or effort to go tinker around in your local politics. And that in itself is a problem. Fascinating story though. They made a movie out of it. I think it's just called The Battle of Athens, Tennessee, I think. And I've never actually watched the whole thing, just parts of it. But there's all kinds of information on it you can look up on your own. Got any comments, you can put them in the comment section as always. They're always read. Thank you for watching. I appreciate your time. I'll see you next time.